what are you doing? It's far too late in the year to be doing overseeding and top dressing. Well, is it? There's only one way to find out and that's to do it. So let's have a look at how we've got to this point over the last couple of days. And for this show, you're gonna need a pen and paper. So get that, get a brew and join me in a sec. Okay, welcome to today's video. It's Thursday, the 21st of September. I'm quite embarrassed to bring you to this one today. What's happened is earlier on in the year, we had a really wet March and April and then the cherry blossoms started to fall and then we said let's do it after that because we didn't want all the cherry blossom falling on the new seed and then we had 49 days of consecutive dry days so we ended up just admitting defeat and saying we're going to do it back end so we're going to do it today i'm going to scary fight today talk dress it tomorrow because i'm running out of time where you'll get it all in one so let's get to it and let's have a walk over and see what problems we've faced earlier in the year Okay, right, so this has had nothing done to it at all this year, not even an iron treatment early does. All I did was I spent about three hours picking annual meadow grass out early and then everything just went um, to pot really. So we've had leather jackets and drought, which has caused this. Got weeds everywhere. We can't do anything about those today. So what we'll do is we'll just scarify it, get rid of all the foliage of this. Obviously they will grow back, but then in four weeks, once the seed's up and running, we can get some uh, weed all on uh, because that can be put on after four weeks without damaging the seed. Probably be five weeks because it's going to take a week or so for the, the seed to germinate. But that's not the problem right now. What the problem is, is all these burr patches along the edge. What happened was in the heat, obviously 49 days with no water, all the edges died off. Leather jacket damage, leather jacket damage just leather jacket damage all over really and that's from drought there's um, a, a manhole under there i think we can get it back i think this could be one of the ones which you know actually turns out all right because the customer wants it looking right so i said let's do it back end running out of time we've got this drain here that's just drain damage if your lawn is covered in mature trees then probably not best to do anything like this because you it, it'll be a disaster because with the leaves falling on it, it's just gonna damage the new seed. You'll have to go on them to clear it off. So I like, we've only got these ones here, so they're all right, and most of them have already fallen off. So again, if your lawn's like at the job where I did the beech nut pick up the other week, where the beech trees, the biggest in Bolton or the biggest in your area, then do not contemplate doing any overseeding. So what we're gonna be doing is scarifying, putting some seed on, got some field compost number four around the side, Unlimited supply because I've got a pallet in so we don't have to stint. I can just put it on the right amount, get it covered, and then let's see what we can do before the winter hits. Not many worm casts about uh, this lawn normally gets absolutely hammered. Obviously, don't get me wrong, there's a few, but normally there's like Mr. Whippy sized ones, but this year they don't seem to be as active. Maybe that's because we've not done anything to the lawn, so maybe they're not as active because the grass hasn't been actively growing. They've kind of decided not to be active, actively moving as well. I'm not sure on that one, but it, obviously there is some, some change. So could be coincidence, but maybe not. So anyway, let's get the scary fire out and let's get it done. And let's try and bring this back to something like. Okay, so welcome to Ye Old Faithful. Back on this today. We've got our blades uh, using this today and not the alley because I just want the strength of the engine today because this lawn is quite thick quite old now so I really want to make an impression we need some grooves for the seed to sit into and I think this is the best machine to do that for us because what's going to happen is if you use the alert the roller is just going to roll over it and maybe close them up a little bit whereas this I can just um, run over the top rake it up I've already cut it so we might not need to cut it again but if I do I can just go in with the hater and yeah closes up the grooves so sometimes you just end up kind of negating what you've done but it's quite firm so i don't think the grooves will close up that much if i just do one pass with the more so yeah so let's just crack on and let's see that's all we can do All right, looks pretty good, pretty aggressive that. On the third pass, did three. As you just saw, I just turned the dial down to get it a bit deeper. And yeah, it's gone really deep. So let's get the rake out, get it raked up, and let's see the damage. 
probably have to mow it because there's quite a lot of stuff come up a lot of soil actually has come up with uh, that just years and years of different things have come up because we've gone quite deep uh, and then the wind has just dropped so if it can stay like this we could get the seed on today ready for coming in tomorrow doing the top dressing Okay, so that's everything raked up. Now I've got a bit of a dilemma, which is I hate because obviously every time I scarify, I always say scalp it, get rid of all this top growth, which is what I normally do a million times out of like, well, 999,999 times out of a million. But maybe on this one today, I've got done such a good job of getting that soil really tilthy on the floor it would be a shame now just to go on with the heavy roller and flatten all that down especially on these areas where it's very uh, open so if we just create a, another flat pan on there the seed will just wash off whereas at the minute we'll just rest in there we'll get the field compost on and then that will just sit on there and it'll be a lovely airy condition for it to get going so that's it for today anyway in terms of my job so i've got overnight to think about it but I think I'm just going to leave it. Unless it's like we come tomorrow and it's just full of leaves because the wind has just picked up a little bit. I'm not going to put the seed on today just because of that reason. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. And the birds will probably eat it all before I actually get to cover it over. Uh, so a few things. But yeah, what do you think I should do? Or what do you think I will do? Because obviously you'll be uh, seeing this finished. Head your bets now. And then we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, we're back. It's actually Saturday the 23rd of September. Yesterday was an absolute write-off weather-wise, so we couldn't get anything done. What's happened since we've been? A load of leaves have fallen. All that nice tilth that we created has been washed back in, although we've got a lot of grooves still, so that's good. A few worm casts have emerged. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to mow it. That would just be bad because what it would do is it would just really create a really solid surface with all that water on there but we can still crack on the wind's quite low as well for good further seeding so what i'll do is first we'll get them with the blower blow all these leaves off and then get them with the seed and then get them with the top dressing and then we can call this one done and uh, hopefully it'll come through before the end of the year All right, so that's the leaves cleared off. Now, it's not as wet as I thought it might be because it is decent draining, as we know, because in the summer it dries out really quick. So that stands to reason that the drainage would be okay. I know um, on the little patch of grass at the top there on the other side, that gets really wet at that bottom corner. But generally, it's just round the other side where it does get wet because the sun doesn't get there till later on and in the winter it doesn't get there at all. So the question I get asked mainly about what we're going to do today is can I put field compost number four on a damp lawn? And the answer is going to be yes, because I'm going to do it. If it was kiln-dried top dressing, like 70-30 sand, then I wouldn't be doing this today because it would just soak up the water straight away and make it less pliable. Whereas the field compost number four, as we know, doesn't absorb water very well at first. So for that reason, we can just get it on. And it's slightly damp anyway in the bag sometimes, um, just because you're never gonna get all the moisture out. So we're good to go. So let's get our seed on. We're gonna stick to the values of what we've got here, which was the Johnson's Premier Pitch. So I just wanna keep it that way. So I've got some left over from when we did Farmer Britain's Best Lawn. So I'll put that down. And then, like I say, get on with the top dressing and that's job done. Not going to cover it over, just customer won't be happy with that, especially with it being on this uh, main road kind of thing. So we're going to be coming quite a bit, blowing the leaves off as and when they drop. But I'm always passing, so we can do that. And obviously this time of year, there's not much going on, so I've got the time. So let's get on with it. And then I'm off to the match this afternoon. Bolton v Peterborough, I believe... Everett's under pressure a little bit because, you know, we've got, we had some dodgy results. Lost last weekend to Reading, 2-1. Drew at Burton. I went to that one, as you know, and we didn't play great. So hopefully today we can get three points on the board. And we've got, four after that, four games coming up. Quite important. 
easy games, I would say. We've got a couple of easy ones, a couple of not so easy ones. We've got uh, Carlisle, Stevenage. You know, these are you're going to be taking six points against these. But Bolton have always been a team that if there's a team in like adversity, they lose to. And if the team's higher up in the league, we lose as well. So <laughs> the uh, the gods could conspire against us and ensure another year in League One, but hopefully not. Okay, so we've got our seed. Why is it blue? I hear you ask. Because it's coated with a fertilizer, but I don't think it's like it's cracked up to be, because um, it's so heavy, and they only sell in the 20 kilogram bags. Is that you get? I actually weighed it out, and you get 60%. You get 40% less seed in a bag than you would if you just bought a bag of 20 kilo Johnson's Premier Pitch with the coating on. It adds a lot of weight, and as soon as it gets wet, it washes off. Uh, and once you've opened it, after six months or so, it's done with because whatever's on it just um, absorbs water and almost like germinates itself and then when you use it, it doesn't work. So not a fan of it, but Peter, at Peter's job, he bought a big bag of it when before we did the job because he was going to do it himself. So he bought the Johnson's Premier Pitch and then this year um, it was still there so he said I could have it so um, I don't know if he meant I could have it for free I'm not sure um, or whether I could have it and I've got to give him some of it whatever actually said so if you're watching Peter what do you reckon so anyway let's get it on what I'll do is as always I'm just gonna go on at 32 because seed doesn't generally tend to drop out very well uh, this spreader on anything less than 32 unless you've got all day to walk up and down but today we are in a bit of a rush so 32 it is uh, it's five, well there's probably three kilos in there, even though it's filled up to the top, which is normally five kilos, with the added weight of the fertiliser on there, it's probably a bit, it is a bit less, so what I'll do is I'll probably have to put another one of those on just to bring it up to where I want to be, because uh, I might as well use it all up to be honest, because we've got big areas where there's big gaps, and we really want to make an impression, so let's just go for it, use it up, and it don't go to waste, because I know this time next year that seed, like I said before, will be uh, no good. Okay, so we just got our pallet of field compost number four. Organic peat free for you eco warriors. You've got your way, you've got your wish. Peat free, yes! I've saved the environment. Not really. So much more going on than peat. So anyway, what we've got here is our peat-free top dressing. If you've not seen it before, I'll just open up a little bag. You can have a look. It's really nice stuff. Lovely, really fine. No bits in there, no bark, no coir, no anything, no stones, no anything. Just lovely, just pliable dressing to go all over our seed. Gives it a nice blanket. And what I, well, the good thing about it is it's really black and the sun gets on it, heats up, bit of moisture in there as well from the rain, seeds up and away in no time. So remember, you've got a code for this, DHLE10 at the Field Compost website and you can get yourself 10% off, courtesy of me. So let's get this shipped over to where we need it and then we'll get it spread and then we can go to the football. Okay, so we're ready to go on with our compost. Now, I know some of you say like, why don't you use a pre-seed fertilizer? Everybody else goes, Ugh. It's not just a pre-seed fertilizer, but a garden ramsey there. It's a fertilizer. So you're not only fertilizing the seeds you've put down, but you're also fertilizing the grass around you. So if we put one on here, what's gonna happen is the grass that's already there is gonna shoot up before our seed has germinated. So that means we've got to get on and cut it and there's a chance then you could vacuum up seeds, which is what you're worried about, or just do damage to the grass, especially this time of year. So we just want it all to grow as one. So we want the seeds to come through alongside that old grass, which hasn't really grown yet, and then feed it, and then we can cut it all as one. So hopefully that clears that one up. But we don't need to do anything like that today anyway, even for the seed, even if there was a fertiliser that just worked on seed, because that eye coating, as they call it, the eye seed, is the seed, like, a biostimulant coating to give it all it needs it has got that so we should see this develop a bit quicker so 
let's get on with it. Enough of that ranting. Okay, so we're just about to go on with the top dressing. I've got my screw fix rake. I think it's three foot long. I've got used to it now, so I'm not gonna chop it down. Those days have gone. It's perfect for what I need. My body's kind of adapted to it. And I've built up the strength to pull it along. And because using this, it's not that heavy anyway. It, most of it just falls through the gaps and allows you to push it really nice. And you just flip it over and use that and just spread it like that. Sometimes I just spread it like that and then I flip it over. I've not done it for a while, so I'll have to reacquaint myself. But I'm sure we'll get there. So yeah, so one bag should do between nine and 10 square meters, as we've worked it out before. Um, so this lawn should need about 16 bags, I think. So be interesting to see how many we use, but I've got plenty. I think I've got 50 bags on that pallet, so we're not gonna run out. So we just do that, fling the bag, the bag down with attitude and you just spread it out. I just put these on the lawn, haven't I? That's a bit of a bad thing. See how heavy those weren't, just move them out of the way. I know they're, they're actually 100 kilos each. Just moved them, made it look easy. So we just brush it on. Doesn't matter if you spill over to the edge a little bit. You don't really want it because it, it is, especially when they're past wet, it does soak up on a solid surface really quickly. Um, and you have to get the hose pipe out to clean it. So probably best not doing that because our hose pipe here that I've got won't reach all the way around here today, just because I've not got the extension bit. So I'll just go as far to the edge as I can without going over. And what you'll also find is with this compost, you'll get a fertilisation with this as well. Because uh, when we put this on before, you get a lovely green colour as well. Partly that is due to just the shadow it creates. Your grass always looks greener when you've got something black in it. Because when you um, top dress new seed, it always looks greener and thicker. But it's just the shadows being created that just makes it stand out more. So... Yeah, just go like this. It's quite therapeutic, the first bag. The 16th bag's like, oh, come on. But the first bag is always a pleasure. You just spread it around. I just, I just dip it out in one bag in one area, but you could tip it out in two areas if you wanted, but it's just so easy to drag over. I just think it's not, it's just whatever you, whatever you want. Whatever you want to do is fine. You don't have to do everything how I do it. If you come up with a better way, then that's fine, who says I've got the best way. I think I have on most things, but maybe if you can find a better way to spread the compost. And don't mention a compost spreader, because I ain't ever getting one. Don't need one, which is far more accurate, health-wise as well, you know, giving me arms a workout. And I once listened to a, it was on the radio many years ago now, and there was a spate of heart attacks in the USA during the snow. And, or they get a lot of heart attacks during the snow because a lot of people who don't really do much say, then suddenly go out and clear the driveway. But what I didn't know was that when you're using your arms, that puts the heart under more stress. So people who aren't used to doing exercise suddenly go out and start shoveling the snow off the drive. They're doing too much too soon. So using the arms is a great exercise for cardiovascular without even knowing it. So. Hopefully, with all the work I do with my arms, my heart's in good health because I eat a lot of rubbish. I really do, I really do. A lot of chocolate, I love, I love chocolate. And as I get older, it's beginning to stick. So I really need to sort my act out. But I, I, go, to, I go to the petrol station, Mars bars. I just absolutely love the Mars bars. They're like, even though they're like the most boring chocolate bar, they just, they've just mentally got me. There's obviously something in there that is addictive. Same with Monsters, I drink a lot of those. Always the sugar-free ones, but just something about the packaging, that like you go in there going, I'm not gonna buy one, I'm not gonna buy one, and then you just look up, see it, and then it, it, you just end up going over and buy it when you're like, Dah! But you get double the amount that you do in a Red Bull, so that's why I always get one of those, because I used to drink Red Bulls, and I was like, well, they're 149 for 250 mil, and then you get a monster for 155, which is double the amount. So it's a no-brainer, really, isn't it? So yeah, so we've just spread that out. Kind of let's just 
I know it's not accurate really, but one, two, one, two, two and a half. And I've probably only done six today. Maybe just because it's a little bit damp, it's not spreading as far. And maybe because the grass is a bit longer, it's not spreading as far as well. So maybe we'll use more, but we'll find out at the end. Right, I'll get on with the rest. You relax with a cup of coffee and watch me do it. Okay, so that's the top dressing done, the field compost number four. Now, I've used about 25 bags, I think. I've not counted, but I know what's left on the pallet. And I might use slightly more because I didn't film just around the corner there. Um, so I've used a lot more than I thought, but again, just because it didn't spread as well. I think in the end, I think it was because the grass is too long in terms of normally I would scalp it and it would just literally be a blank canvas as short as you want and it spreads a lot easier but because of the grass is there that's creating a buffer zone stopping it from spreading but we've got a good amount on it's not going to cause any problems obviously it'd cost you more if you was doing it now this way so you might want to hold off to the spring well, like i said if it's got mature trees around you don't really want to be doing this seeding now because i think it would be a mistake so only if you've got a garden like this where you've got very few trees around which are going to cause problems that you could go ahead and it's end of September. I mean, I, I have seeded a job in October once, many years, probably about oh, 10, 12 years ago. And I seeded it on my birthday, which is 8th of October, and I covered it. And by the end of the month, well, we had quite a nice lawn actually. And, and in those days, the weather was quite nice in November, but now it's, it's not very nice. Um, so I don't, I don't know if it'd work, but that's, that's your call. I, I'm gonna say, end of this month i really wouldn't want to be seeding just because you just never know what's going to happen and especially if you've got the mature trees so what we'll do now is we'll go and mix our h 2 go wetting agent and get that on okay so we've got our mix ready just the h 2 go today nothing else we're not putting any nutrition on or anything because it would be pointless because the seed's not going to take it up because it's not grown yet and we don't want that old grass coming through just yet so we'll just go on with that and what this is going to do it's just going to break that surface tension of the compost so when it rains it can absorb it rather than washing it off because if, it, if you don't put the wetting agent on and you get a really heavy downpour it could just wash off and because we've got a hill at the back there we really don't want to be risking all that seed and compost washing down because we've got some heavy storms ahead which is great because it's going to water this it means i don't have to which is great so let's just spray it and then we can go okay now that's the wetting agent done now when i bought this iphone 14 to film with and i it entered my, my details to put my Apple I, I, like, account on. It actually brought up some photos, which I thought I'd lost, and it was in a secret album. And it was this job in 2013 when we dug it up and VC'd it. Now, I've just had a quick look back, and I'll just show you the pictures that are on it, because there's a little before in terms of what the lawn looked like, and then the job just after we've sanded it and everything. And it's, I think it's been seeded because it's nicely raked. And that was on the 21st of September in 2013. So we're only two days out from actually doing the job like almost simultaneously, but like 10 years later. Now, if I show you a picture from Christmas, just, I think it was about the 20th of December, later that year, after it bedded in, and I give it a cylinder cut because it was really mild that year. Uh, you can see how good it looked and I'm hoping to get somewhere near like that again. So if we can, so that's the challenge that's like to, to keep the videos coming because obviously you do run out of content as the, the year goes on and, and the weather gets worse. But if we can get this looking something like that for Christmas, I think that'd be pretty good considering it's been an awful all year round. I haven't even got any pictures because I'd just be so embarrassed to show you them um, that I think just for the customer's point of view, to have a nice lawn at Christmas while everybody's is looking pretty rubbish, uh, I think that'd be really nice. So that's the plan. So let's uh, do our new segment of the show, which I will tell you about in a sec. Okay, so this is the new part of the programme that I was talking about. If you remember a few weeks ago when we did a scarifying job 
I went through a few weeds with you and taught you the Latin names. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it as an actual lawn weed test this time. That list that I learned, 10 weeds at Myersco College, I'm gonna split into two and we're gonna go through them in the next couple of videos and do a test in the next one, if you know what I mean. So let's start. If you get that pen and paper that I told you to get at the beginning of the video, it'll all make sense now. So we've got weed number one, which is the buttercup, which is ranunculus repens or repens, whichever one you want to say. My friend Phil says repens, I say, I was taught repens, so we'll go with repens. We've got weed number two, which is the dandelion. Everybody in the world knows what dandelion is, but not everybody knows in the world what the Latin name is, and that is Taraxicum officinale. Next lawn weed number three is just the normal white clover, which is Trifolium repens or repens, whichever one you want to say, no problem. The fourth weed on that list was Hurry Bittercress, which is Cardamine Hirsuta. And the last one on the list today is one that I couldn't remember in that last video, which was the Greater Plantain, and that is Plantago Major. So if you write all those down, revise them, and in the next video, we'll go through them and we'll see how good you are at remembering them. I remembered them in the mid 90s, 96, I started at my school college. And I think it was probably 97 when I learned that. So it stuck with me for nearly 26 years. So hopefully you learn them, they can stick with you forever. And you never know, they sometimes come up in pub quizzes and you'll be like, just God, because you've got what a Latin name of a dandelion was and you'll have me to thank. So, hope oh, you've enjoyed this video. Join me next time when we're doing something else, lawn related. Remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you soon.